here we hear that ghee and butter and saturated fat they are absolutely bad for us and that's what i believed in so that when my parents came to the us and my mother would make fresh bread uh-huh. and so she would habitually apply loads of ghee on it and i would get angry i said mom we don't eat this stuff here you know this causes heart disease this is bad for you and bad for us and you shouldn't be doing that and she would try to explain it to me that no this is not true you know there is something misinformation out there people have consumed this stuff for generations and generations mm-hmm. it has been talked about in the ancient text and you should believe in the tradition and the ancient knowledge Welcome to the Wise Traditions Podcast, sponsored by the Weston A. Price Foundation for Wise Traditions in Food, Farming, and the Healing Arts. We are your source for scientific knowledge and traditional wisdom to help you achieve optimal health. I'm your host, Hilda Labrada Gore. This is episode 41, and my guest is Sandeep Agarwal. He is the founder of Pure Indian Foods, which makes grass fed organic ghee and sells traditional organic Indian foods. His interest in this field grew out of his family's fifth-generation ghee business, started by his great-great-grandfather in 1889. Sandeep is a graduate of David Winston Center for Herbal Studies, and he is a well-known speaker in the U.S. and India. In today's episode, you'll hear how he learned to embrace fats and how this turnabout affected his family's health and the health of countless others. Before we begin the conversation, let's stop and thank our sponsors. Wise Traditions is supported by White Oak Pastures, Radically Traditional Farming. Visit whiteoakpastures.com. And the Weston A. Price Foundation. The foundation is holding its Wise Traditions Conference in Montgomery, Alabama this November. Join us. Learn, eat well, and have fun. Go to wisetraditions.org for details. Welcome to Wise Traditions, Sandeep. Uh, Thank you so much for having me on this podcast, Hilda. So we were talking before we started recording about your young two-year-old son who was having health concerns. Can you tell us a little bit about that story? Oh, absolutely. I would love to. Um, So my son Arjun, uh, when he was born, that was in, what, 2002. So he used to have a lot of cold. And uh, we would take him to the doctor. Doctor would put him on the antibiotic. He would have ear infection. So the uh, antibiotic course would run for two weeks, and then he would get better. Then he would stay better for, say, a couple of weeks. And then, for some reason or the other, he would have the whole, uh, you know, period of, you know, chest congestion, cold, asthma, and you name it, you know, which means, you know, all the medications about asthma, the nebulizer, you know, the uh, inhaler, all that. I was, you know, absolutely sick of it that, you know, how a small boy has to go through so much of pain. And I started to inquire as to what is the reason because I considered that, you know, whatever we were eating at home was, you know, uh, pretty good. Uh, uh, My wife, you know, loves to cook and, uh, you know, cooks Indian food. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we shouldn't be going through things like that. At that point of time, uh, while researching online, I learned about Western A. Price Foundation, and uh, I contacted uh, local chapters uh-huh. uh, here in Princeton, and then I came to know about uh, you know the website and the events, and I learned that uh, Sally is going to be speaking in not too far away from here in Lancaster County in Pennsylvania, and I said, okay, let me go and you know see uh, you know listen to her and see what she has to say. Uh-huh. And that was a turning point, you know. I mean, thinking back, because Sally was obviously in Lancaster, all the, you know, farmers are there, all the Amish farmers, and she's talking about raw milk, Uh which is, you know, such an important, uh, you know, topic there in, uh, you know, that part of the state. And also it is so central to Western A. Price Foundation's theme. So I learned about raw milk, and... um, I said, hmm, that sounds interesting. I mean, you know, we are just talking about milk. You know, there is nothing special about this. You know, in India, you know, we drink lots of milk. In fact, I remember when I was growing up, I would go to the farm, you know, with our own container, and then the milkman, you know, would pour some milk into my container, and we'll just bring it home, Uh and we boil it, and we drink it. So, you know, we have done that, 
And so I'm very familiar with, you know, that process of getting the milk directly from the farm. Mm -hmm. So I started to inquire about raw milk, but then, then I said, okay, so raw milk, you know, the milk you buy is raw. Yes. And then which means once you bring it home, you are supposed to boil it. And then they said, no, 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 that's not the idea. The idea is to actually drink it straight. And I just could not get my head, you know, wrapped around that thought because I had never done that. Your family's my, tradition, yes, was to Yeah, my the family has never it. done that. Yeah, uh -huh. Exactly. So, you know, we would purchase raw and pasteurized milk and then we will boil it and then drink it. And now I'm thinking why we did that, because obviously there is no guarantee that that milk was produced in very sanitary conditions. Mm -hmm. So even though that was, that was from a local farm, but it was you know, contaminated in the sense that it was safer to drink it after boiling it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did you know, when I was growing up. But after I learned about raw milk, I was, uh, you know, my parents were visiting uh, from India so I asked my dad about it. I said, you know, dad, like, do you know about, you know, something about raw milk? And he says, you know what? Yeah, when I was young, we used to drink milk straight from the cow's udder. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I don't know if the, in other cultures, you know, people do that. I've seen some pictures from, you know, Africa where, you know, kids are shown, you know, drinking milk straight. But I guess in every culture, you know, people, do, it, you know, did that which is to enjoy the milk, you know, straight, uh, you know, with absolutely no processing at all. So that was my introduction to raw milk. So coming back to the story about my son, so we used to consume a lot of milk, obviously store-bought, non-organic, non-grass-fed, pasteurized milk, you know, mm -hmm. that white liquid that we call milk. Yes. And we used to consume lots of it. So we started to change that and started to introduce raw milk into our diet. And then we made, you know, several other changes as well, you know, which means cutting out sweeteners, you know, sugar, which is like, you know, Indians love sweets. Uh -huh. My wife is, a, you know, a great cook, and she would always have some dessert, uh, you know, ready in the home to be enjoyed after dinner. So along with the raw milk, we started to make several changes in our diet, you know, based on the principles of Western Enterprise Foundation. Uh -huh. And the good news is my son slowly started to recover. He started to have needs of less and less medication. Oh. And his asthma went away. And then I'm researching now that it's actually, there are thousands of documented studies about children, you know, who had asthma and who had congestion and, uh, you know, these uh, breathing difficulties that do, do miraculously better on raw milk diet. That's right. And I experienced that myself in my own family. And as a result, I'm, I'm you know, deeply thankful to Sally and the Western Prize Foundation. Wow, you really took that message to heart, applied it, and saw results. Absolutely, absolutely, without a doubt. And so I am a, a huge proponent, proponent of raw milk. And because of my background in um, Indian tradition, I then started to research as to Okay, so my dad used to drink raw milk, but what about the ancient text? Because India has something called Ayurveda, which is the India's healing science, 5,000 years old. And it's, uh, all the textbooks, they are written in Sanskrit, which, as you know, is the mother of all Indo-European languages. Mm -hmm. And I happen to uh, you know, understand a little bit of Sanskrit, you know, not like you know, a lot. I'm not fluent in it. But uh, I can, you know, make some sense out of that. And I have created a library of all these uh, Sanskrit textbooks. So I've been researching and I do see reference of raw milk in these very old textbooks. Ah. And the reference is that they talk about a milk which is warm. And warm milk means that when, when it is straight coming from the udder and where that fresh milk is warm, Mm -hmm. And that milk is compared to nectar. Like there is absolutely nothing better than that. That's amazing. It sounds beautiful. How encouraging that you did the research and found that those ancient texts also referred to the raw milk. Yes, yes, absolutely it did. And uh, so we, so, you know, people back then understood the benefit of it. And I'm glad that we are now learning or relearning those benefits once again and applying it and seeing the good results. Now, you said your family had a business that 
used and was big on animal fats, including ghee, but that you were looking askance at it because you had been affected by the kind of Western influence that was moving away from fats in a certain time. Is that right? That, that is correct. So uh, it's a good point that you brought in that my family's business in India since my great, great grandfather time has been in ghee. You know, that's what we had done is to, uh, you know, have the ghee made in small villages, collect it from there and then sell it. We still have our small little business in India, which my uncle runs. Uh-huh. And it's a tiny shop in a, a northern province of India called Haryana where he lives and he has been doing this all his life and i remember so that's my uncle and i remember my grandfather who used to run the business before him and i remember spending time with him at our ghee shop but the thing is that you are absolutely right here we hear that ghee and butter and saturated fat they are absolutely bad for us and that's that's what i believed in so that when my parents came to the us and my mother would make fresh bread uh-huh. and it's common to apply ghee on freshly made indian flat bread like nobody would even eat an indian flat bread without ghee it is a disrespect to offer somebody a bread without ghee on it uh-huh. and so she would habitually apply loads of ghee on it and i would get angry i said mom we don't eat this stuff here you know this causes heart disease this is bad for you and bad for us and you shouldn't be doing that so and she would try to explain it to me that no this is not true you know there is something misinformation out there people have consumed this stuff for generations and generations mm-hmm. it has been talked about in the ancient text so whatever you are saying it's not correct and you should not fully believe into that and you should believe in the tradition and the ancient knowledge but obviously i was not in tune with that so i would not consume it and i would tell her that you know please make me the flat bread without the ghee and then she would have no choice but to do that uh. but slowly when i started to read more started to do the research found out the whole story about how we have been misled and uh, so i listened to sally speak about you know the oils and fats you know her famous presentation where she gives the complete background and that opened up my eyes. Wow, I'm hearing your story and I'm just smiling because I remember the same scenario happening in my household. My mother's from Mexico and she uh-huh. would be preparing meat, just some ground beef sauteing it, preparing it for our tacos, and my older sister would get so mad at her, "Mom, you've got to drain the grease out," you know, <laughs> because she exactly. had bought the word on the street that that was bad for you. And I remember my mom dutifully draining the grease out. My sister was like, "That's going to make us fat and sick," you know, and she was so worried about it. And It's so funny that our moms were right. <laughs> yeah. So that so that was the time when uh you know I did all these changes and I said if I see so much of benefit in the health of my own family mm-hmm. by following these ancient uh, tradition and the principles why can't we take this message and then help other people as well. So I used to work in the uh, information technology. Uh, I'm a computer I have a bachelor in computer science. and masters in finance so i told my wife you know let's you know let's do something i mean if this stuff is so beneficial we want to help others and we started to make small batches of ghee as a trial and uh-huh. see how people like it and they did everybody loved it slowly and slowly we just uh, you know i my wife initially started as a full time into this and i was part time and then slowly i joined her in full time capacity and now after 8 years this is my this is our full time business. Oh that's fantastic. Well Sandeep I am ready to get on the ghee train but you've got to enlighten me. Like tell me what's the difference between ghee and butter for example? Absolutely. If you talk about ghee you know let me tell you a little bit about you know first of all obviously what ghee is and then I'll tell you the reason why people used ghee in India. Sounds great. So the difference between butter and ghee is that ghee is made from butter so butter is the only ingredient in making plain ghee and the way you make it is that you take unsalted butter you put it in a pot you know put it on you know medium heat uh-huh. the butter melts 
and then it starts to bubble. And after, say, you know, say 15, 20 minutes or so, a separation happens, separation of fats and the milk solids. So what butter has, let me give you the composition of butter. Uh-huh. Butter has about 80% fat. It has 18% water. And the 2% are the rest of the things, which could be the protein, which is the casein and the whey. It could be the lactose, which is the sugar, the vitamin, the fat soluble vitamins, and, you know, minerals and other, you know, trace amounts of other things. Mm -hmm. So when you're making ghee, the idea is to get the fat. So ghee is that fat part of the butter. Mm. So when you are, when you are simmering the butter, the water is being evaporated, so that 18% is gone. And then um, the solids, the 2% milk solids, they separate from the fat. See, initially in butter, they are mixed in. Yes. And that's why even if you melt butter, it is cloudy, right? Mm-hmm. But ghee is clear. Mm-hmm. And the reason it is clear is because the separation of the solids from the fat happens at a point and after which the, the solids, they settle at the bottom and the pure golden liquid at the top is what ghee is. And you just take it, you filter it, and you store it. And so that's what people did. I mean, they figured out how to make ghee uh, you know, three, 4,000 years ago, believe it or not. And it is very well documented in these Sanskrit textbooks wow. that I enjoy reading about how ghee is made and the benefits of ghee. And one of my passion is, is to... See what is written in the textbooks, these ancient textbooks. Yes. And if it says that ghee is good for good eyesight, then what I do is I try to link it to modern research as to why is so. Uh-huh. And I enjoy doing that. So you said you separate out when you're making the ghee, you separate out the, the milk part of it. And that's probably why people who have dairy sensitivities will choose ghee over butter, correct? That's an excellent point, yes. So, you know, that's absolutely correct. For example, in the GAPS diet, when all the dairy is removed, ghee is the only dairy product which is permissible. I don't know which stage of GAPS diet, but I know that in one of the stages, ghee, homemade ghee can be introduced just because it does not have those milk solids, which can cause people, uh, you know, these reactions. You said that the ancient scripts mentioned the benefits of ghee. Can you tell us some of them? Absolutely. So one of the uh, benefits mentioned is consuming ghee on a regular basis will give you good eyesight. And we now know that ghee contains fat-soluble vitamins, one of which is vitamin A. A. And, all right. I knew you were going to mention know, A. I love A. <laughs> yeah. And we know the chemical name for vitamin A is retinol, right? Mm-hmm. And that's why, you know, the, uh, you know, it is very well established that vitamin A and it's uh, the uh, precursor, beta carotene, they are very beneficial to the eyes. But people figured it out. They did not have any labs or any test tubes or, you know, any microscope back then. Mm -mm. But somehow or the other, they knew that if you are consuming this, you would have good eyesight. The other things which are mentioned is that it is a great rejuvenative it provides longevity, it provides strength, and it provides immunity. So there is a concept of ojas in Ayurveda, and ojas is spelled O-J-A-S, and it is the immunity in our body, and there are various foods which are described which enhance ojas in the body, and the topmost food is ghee, believe it or not. We want to pause now and thank our sponsors, White Oak Pastures, pasture raising and hand butchering grass-fed beef, lamb, goat, and pastured poultry, hogs, and rabbits. Visit whiteoakpastures.com. And join us at the Wise Traditions Conference in Montgomery, Alabama this November. Sandeep, today's guest, will be there, and I will too. You will have opportunities to delve deeper, ask questions, and connect with people who care about nourishing their health through nutrient-dense foods just like you do. There will be 44 speakers, 5 delicious meals, 85 great exhibitors, and over 1,000 attendees. Learn, eat well, and have fun. Go to wisetraditions.org for details. And the topmost food is ghee, believe it or not. 
so it is an overall one of the best foods to eat it's obviously very expensive because if you uh, if you see that to make say a pound of ghee you would need about 30 pounds of milk because milk has about say 3% of fat 3 to 4% fat depending on the breed of the cow so you will need large amounts of milk and because this is such a pure product and you know a little bit more expensive than the other food products that in the history it was adulterated you know people would mix different things into it you know cheap stuff cheap oils uh-huh. to sell it in the name of ghee so when i was talking you know to my friends and family in india and talking about the benefits of ghee and they said no ghee causes you know bad health and heart disease then i tell them about trans fats uh-huh. and what i learned is that in india there was a company which got the technology of hydrogenating fats and they started making these trans fat products and they called it vegetable ghee believe it or not where ghee was written in bold letters and vegetable was written in small fine print uh-huh. and that product was sold at say 1/6 of the price of the ghee at in those times mm. and people would say oh this is great you know uh, this is you know clean product absolutely good and why not we consume it so it's the same crisco story that we hear in the in america yes the same story was carried out in india under different brand names and people even till now believe that ghee is the one which caused the heart disease whereas we now know very well established in the scientific community and the research that it's the cause is the trans fats Wow, yeah, that happens all around the world. An imitation product is put out there that fools consumers and damages their health. Exactly, exactly. So ghee is, you know, very beneficial on its own, but then something interesting I learned is that ghee also is beneficial as a carrier of nutrition in the body. I mean that when you cook vegetables into ghee, ghee then helps transport the benefits of whatever you are cooking in into the body and this is again a very ancient ayurvedic tradition mm-hmm. where different herbs and spices they are infused in ghee to make different ayurvedic supplement products and there are thousands of such products and i am fascinated by them and i have been researching these products and i am proud to say that we will be launching a set of these products based on ghee into the market very shortly. And that's your Pure Indian Foods company? That is correct. So, ghee has gotten really popular, Sandeep, in the US. Are you surprised by that? What do you think is the cause? You know, I I am ab- absolutely surprised actually uh, to tell you the truth. It is, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, IBM story in the 80s when they did the research and uh, they created a computer and it, you know, it was the size of a room. the research showed that the worldwide demand for such a computer is like about 4 or 6 i forgot you know <laughs> like that's the how many computers are needed in the world right oh. and that's the same kind of situation that we were in that when we started our business we absolutely did not know what kind of demand there could be uh-huh. but we stayed on and we educated and i guess that's what people needed at that time was a lot of education about the benefits and also how to use it and we worked very very hard educating people and keeping you know very consistent very high quality product and also innovated by infusing different spices and herbs into ghee like say we have a product called garlic ghee where garlic is infused in ghee and is absolutely delicious so i am as surprised <laughs> although i mean it's it's good to see ghee becoming so popular and a fat of choice in many circles and people uh, you know uh, truly enjoy cooking with it and they enjoy its uh, taste and they are also slowly understanding its health benefits so it is good to see that hilda it is i think people are really looking to improve their health they're getting the idea that they need to care about what they're putting into their bodies and so it is really encouraging and speaking of health have you seen some people whose lives have been changed by besides your own family obviously but others who've said wow this ghee has really helped me out Oh, actually, there are you know several people who uh, uh, you know tell us about it they, during private conversations. They send us emails, 
In fact, I was in uh, Boulder, Colorado just a few weeks ago, and there is a man uh, who has been consuming our ghee. He is doing his own sort of clinical trial. He says that his doctor is saying that his uh, numbers are great, you know, from his uh, health perspective. And also he was talking something about the scan of his arteries and how they are decalcifying. And he says he will, at some point of time, publish something about it. So which is very encouraging. There are people who tell us that they have been consuming ghee and their uh, butyrate levels and the omega-3s, they are improving quite a bit. And they are tolerating other foods much better. The gut is healing, which is all very, very encouraging for us. Absolutely. So, Sandeep, as we start to wrap up, what would you recommend that the listener do to improve their health? I would say that just follow the uh, principles laid out by the Standard Price Foundation. There is so much of intelligence and knowledge into those messages. Uh, you know, for, for a beginner, they could be a little bit too much to practice and follow everything mm-hmm. what's being said. But the idea is to not take everything or try to do everything on day one. Just start to include as much as you can. You know, one step at a time, say you start to introduce raw milk. The next time you can maybe try to soak some grains. I mean, all these things are difficult. They take time. And, you know, we have busy lives. Family members, they are working outside. And, you know, you have, you know, kids to take care of. You have, you know, jobs to do, business to run. There are things, but, you know, with preparation and planning and one step at a time, I think if you start to apply these principles, you would see huge benefit in your health. So I don't want to add anything from my own side because, I think Sally and Western Enterprise Foundation, they have done an amazing job of laying out all these principles already. Well, that's great. Sandeep, I really appreciate your taking time today. I look forward to talking to you again sometime. Sounds good, Hilda. It was a pleasure speaking with you. And our uh, website to reach us is pureindianfoods.com. Everybody is welcome to check the website or give us a call if they have any questions, and we will be happy to help. Very good. Thank you, Sandeep. My guest today was Sandeep Agarwal. Learn more about Sandeep by visiting his website, pureindianfoods.com. The show links and highlights can be found on the westinaprice.org website. Click on the podcast page and go to episode 41 for show notes. Hey, and I want to give a shout out today to Charlie, Bernie, and the Podcast Village team for their sound support and expertise. Thanks, guys. Did you know that there are Weston A. Price Foundation chapters all over the U.S. and around the world? Chapter leaders help you find good food in your area, and some have meetings you can attend. Go to our website, westonaprice.org, and click on Find a Local Chapter to see if there is one near you. Wise Traditions is brought to you by the Weston A. Price Foundation for Wise Traditions in Food Farming and the Healing Arts. The content of this podcast is provided for informational purposes only and is not intended as a substitute for medical advice.